Hello, my name is Elsa Gilliam and I'm the founder of Shiro Hub, creating video games that teach awareness about domestic violence and gender-based violence. Reflecting on my own personal experience of domestic violence, I wanted to find a way to best help others who were in the same situation without being aware of it or equip those around them with tools to identify it and learn of helpful resources. Creating a video game to teach such awareness seemed a really good option. It became clear to me through studying the topic that leveraging the scalability of technology to create an engaging and immersive learning tool could be effective for youth and adults alike. I had no clue how to do this, but going to the Games for Change Festival in 2018 inspired me. I came away energized. I created a number of prototypes for different cultures and based my master's thesis on a study of the Haitian version. After taking the game from concept to realization, 24 Haitian garment factory workers trialed the game, doing a survey before and after gameplay to gauge their acceptance of the myths and mindsets that perpetuate gender-based violence and domestic violence. Results from the initial study were encouraging, and I'm still working on that game. With teams assisting with content for other languages, French, German, Spanish, etc., some of which are now also in prototype format, it became evident on the trip to Kuala Lumpur that it would be wise to collaborate with a video game company that had experience in creating quality games that are emotionally sensitive. I was delighted to meet Sakina of Persona Theory Games at Level Up KL. Together we came up with the idea to create a video game for Malaysia to create awareness of gender-based violence to teach the player the dynamics of functional versus dysfunctional relationships. It became a passion for us and our teams. It also brings the promise of a more sophisticated version of the suite of video games for Shiro Hub. For the Malaysia version of the video game, our intention is to gather feedback on the current version, including academic input, before organizing a trial, similar to the trial run on the Haitian version. We used recognized scales, such as the Domestic Violence Myth Acceptance Scale, as appropriate for the audience and age group, of course, and potentially culturally adjusted. Using those scales, conduct a study with before and after surveys to gauge acceptance of the myths of gender-based violence and domestic violence. Gender-based violence occurs all around the world, and Malaysia is no exception. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit Malaysia, conditions only served to further increase the number of cases of domestic violence. The Women's Aid Organization recorded a staggering four-fold increase in the number of calls received compared to the number before the movement control order was imposed in Malaysia. We believe that education is an important tool when it comes to combating issues such as gender-based violence and discrimination. And as such, we turn our focus on the youth and the education that they receive. What we found were disheartening cases of sexual harassment and harmful perceptions of sexuality due to conservative norms, among other factors. Hi everyone, my name is Sakina Latte. I'm one of the co-founders of Persona Theory Game Studio based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We're an indie game studio that focuses on telling Southeast Asian stories. So I met Elsa through one of the Level Up conferences a few years back, and I was inspired by her story and her mission to educate different communities about gender-based violence. Ever since then, through the years we've been talking about bringing a Malaysian version to life. So now with a collaboration between Persona Theory Games and Shiro Hub, I'm presenting to you the Malaysian version that explores uh, gender-based violence called Project Half-Light. In Project Half-Light, we intend to scrutinize the conservative sexual norms by putting players into the shoes of a 15-year-old Malaysian girl. You are a student writer trying to get the support for a fellow schoolmate who disappeared following a slew of cruel online rumors. Your aim is to explore the impact of this girl's disappearance by talking to the people that were closest to her. At its core, Half-Light discusses gender-based violence in the form of physical, mental, psychological, and sexual harm. It also discusses intimate partner violence, discrimination based on gender, race, and economic class and online harassment. But if you want people to support your cause, you must first earn their trust. Characters will indicate their preferred response speed.
Depending on the time frame that you decide to respond in, the character will reply either positively or negatively. In this case, the boy has indicated that he appreciates a quick response. We implemented this timer to teach players how to properly navigate a conversation, especially when discussing important issues such as gender-based violence and discrimination. It also shows that you are paying attention to a character's feelings. If you let the timer count down without tapping on the response button, it will default to a slow response. As you can see, he loses patience. The purpose of the callout feature is to help players identify discrimination and violence that is being thrown their way. Here, the player points out a gendered stereotype. If the player swipes left or allows the timer to count down, the conversation continues without any callout. Our goal is to create an authentic experience that is distinctively Malaysian in nature. Through Project Half Light, we hope to illustrate situations of gender based violence that can and has happened to people in real life. Video game learning has the capability to really touch hearts. We hope that the game that we are creating is able to help a lot of people to understand about domestic violence, gender-based violence, and really to also help those who are suffering it and those around them to be able to help them. It's very important that we all participate in preventing gender-based violence from becoming a problem of the next generation. The more we can educate this current generation, the less likely we are to see it perpetuate into the future. Domestic violence and gender-based violence, those are themes that we can all do something about, whether it's being aware of it so that you can be more sensitive to somebody who's going through it, or perhaps you can point them to some resources, or perhaps, unfortunately, perhaps, maybe that is your journey. And in that case, we hope that our resources will really help you.